Hello guys! If you've ever worked with mechanical equipment, you've probably come across the word backlash. When people first hear it, they often ask, Huh? Backlash? Is something broken? If the gears are slipping, isn't that a big problem? And that's a common concern. But is it really something to worry about? Today, let's break down the truth behind this misunderstood but common term. Backlash. If you're holding a cup of coffee right now, you're perfectly prepared. Let's enjoy this. Let's start with two terms that often get mixed up, backlash and backdrive. Backlash is, simply put, the gap between gear teeth. In machines, when gears switch direction, there's a tiny delay before movement starts. That little empty space it has to travel through first, that's backlash. Backdrive, on the other hand, is a totally different story. It happens when force applied at the output side transfers backward to the input side. In other words, the machine starts moving in reverse. Here's an example. Let's say you have a powered wheelchair that's turned off, but you need to push it manually. The wheels must turn freely, right? When those wheels start spinning the motor in reverse, that's backdrive. Here's a common question. So should we always stop backdrive? Isn't it dangerous if machines start spinning backward? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Like many things in life and engineering, the answer is, it depends. Take robots that interact with humans. Think of gimbal cameras or hospital beds that need to be manually adjusted. You want backdrive there. If they lock up completely, the user won't be able to move them by hand. It's like telling someone with a frozen shoulder to lift their arm. It's just not going to happen. Same with a powered wheelchair. If the battery's dead, a gentle push should let it roll. That's both safe and helpful. But backdrive isn't always a good thing. Imagine a lift holding a heavy load that suddenly drops when pushed. That's dangerous. Or a precision machine that moves ever so slightly when it should stay perfectly still. In these cases, you need self-locking mechanisms or braking systems. So, what's the conclusion? Backdrive can be either a helpful feature or a hazard, depending on the use. Now, let's go back to backlash. Many people assume the less backlash, the better. But is that really true? It depends on the situation. In fields like semiconductor equipment or precision inspection machines, where even a own millimeter error is unacceptable. Yes, the backlash should be as small as possible. But in other cases, it's not so black and white. Think about fitness machines at the gym, electric seat adjusters in cars, or simple rotating machines in factories. In these cases, a little bit of play might actually be a good thing. It's kind of like wearing shoes that are too tight. They may look great at first, but your feet will hurt pretty quickly. Sometimes, backlash is like a breathing room for the machine. So, what kind of gear reducer is the best? There's only one correct answer. It depends on your application. Let's wrap it up. Backlash is a mechanical characteristic, a designed intolerance. Backdrive can be dangerous. But in some machines, it's absolutely essential. The best gear reducer is the one that fits your equipment best. And if you understand these concepts well, you can even build custom solutions that work perfectly for your needs. So that's it for backlash and backdrop, the myths and the facts. If these once confusing terms feel a little clearer now, then we've done our job. And hey, like and subscribe.